Hello, welcome to worship with us here. Wherever you're looking at the screen, you're very welcome. This week is the first week of Lent, and we're looking at the temptations of Jesus. The theme for our service is walking with God in these fragile times. And our call to worship are wise words from Psalm 33. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war ho horse is vain hope for victory. By its great might, it cannot save. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. We're going to light a peace candle in each of the churches and we'll be lighting it throughout Lent. And there are more wise words here, this time from the writer Peter Miller. How do we wait in these fragile times? How do we understand resurrection in the face of so much death? How can we be still when so many around are violated? Questions that we cannot answer, just like the disciples of old. They were baffled too and lost, weary with grief. Yet with them we can pray. God, in these fragile times, help us to remain open to your spirit, to work for the coming of peace and understanding in our violent and divided world. And in the churches we will share together the words of the universal prayer for peace. O oh God, lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. We ask it for your own name's sake. Amen. Today's reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 4. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days. And at the end of them, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the son of God, tell the stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world and said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. So, if you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Amen. May God bless this reading from his word. There's a phrase in one of the church's creeds, which some of you will know, which says Jesus was tempted as we are. But I wonder how many of us take that seriously. He was the son of God. He was sinless, ready to die for all of us and to face the worst that humanity could throw at him, trusting that through him, God would show his love for the world. And through his resurrection, new life will be there for us all. But in these times when youngsters watch programmes and films featuring superheroes, I think we can all be caught up in ascribing superhero status to Jesus. 
a mystical, religious superhero who will ultimately save us from death and disaster. But today's reading from Luke, and in fact the whole of the New Testament, reveal that Jesus did not have magical powers to overcome everything, and he was flesh and blood. He too belonged to the human race, as well as being God's son. And in this scene that we read about in Luke's Gospel just now, his sharing of our flesh and blood is revealed in the temptations that he had to face. We can imagine the devil's voice in Jesus' mind, weakened as he would have been after 40 days of fasting in the desert, and perhaps it was very tempting what he heard. Surely God wouldn't want him to starve. Use your power to make these stones into bread. If God, as Gabriel told Mary, wants you to have sovereignty over the world, why not do it now in one quick and decisive way? If you are the Messiah, why not prove it by spectacular displays of power? The temptations to satisfy human hungers, to achieve domination, to display your power in destructive ways are too obvious to all of us, aren't they, today? So those were real and very tempting suggestions to Jesus. Countered by him when he quoted scripture, he didn't argue with the devil. Instead, he used what he knew to be true to turn the temptations aside. I wonder if you'd agree with me when I say this. When we find ourselves arguing over different aspects of something that we know is wrong and are tempted to do, this arguing over the temptation can make it too attractive to avoid. Jesus did not compromise with evil at any point in his time on earth. Thinking about this, I find myself wishing that I too could have the faith of Jesus. I too could counter temptation with what I know of God from the Bible from prayer, from my walk with him in my daily life. And surely this is why Lent is important. We can choose to use it to refresh our faith, to remind ourselves about God and what we know of him in Jesus. And we can spend time in prayer and become more aware of his presence with us always. And he will give us the strength to overcome our temptations. Finally, I think it is important for us to think about when Jesus faced his time of testing. After his baptism, when God confirmed that he was his beloved son, Jesus went into the wilderness to fast and prepare himself for his ministry on earth. The temptations came at the end of that time in the wilderness. And if we cast our minds over what Jesus did in the three years of his ministry, I think we can guess how important this time in the wilderness was to prepare him. Then in the next chapter, the very next chapter, chapter four in Luke's Gospel, Jesus went to the synagogue in his hometown of Nazareth and announced his ministry in the words of Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, he said, because he has anointed me to tell the poor good news. He sent me to announce the release of prisoners and give sight to the blind, to set the wounded victims free, to announce the year of God's special favour. And today he told them in the synagogue, the scripture from Isaiah is fulfilled. Well, they hounded him from their synagogue and he went on with his ministry, becoming a wandering preacher, teacher, healer, with followers, which he had asked to follow him. And he demonstrated in his life and death and resurrection that he is indeed God's son, the Messiah. So today's passage of his temptations is the story of an in-between time 
between God's confirmation of him as his beloved son at his baptism and the dangers and opportunities ahead of him for his ministry here on earth. Perhaps we can imagine him in the wilderness, in the desert, this in-between time. He was alone. There were wild animals. There would be relentless sun and wind. In night, it would be very cold, though there would be a, a roof full of stars. His time in the wilderness may speak to some of us who've had or who are having times of feeling deserted or of being in an alien landscape with dangers that we cannot see and we have not encountered before. There will be times for all of us when our lives feel broken and we feel lost. There are different wildernesses, aren't there? There's grief. There's illness, loss, bewilderment, betrayal. At times of such difficulties, may we feel the temptation to turn away from God. There's no doubt that every Christian will be tested at the very points which matter most in his or her life. And we can turn to God for help and strength. We're to learn to recognise the voices which whisper lies. And at the heart of our resistance to temptation is always our love and our loyalty to God, who offers us his love, his encouragement, his strength, fulfilment. None of which either the world or the devil can give us. Lent speaks of the God who longs not to condemn, but to forgive, not to punish, but to bless. Thanks be to God. Let us bring to God our prayers for others. Let us pray. Compassionate God, be with all those today who need your company in the wildernesses of their lives. We pray especially for those facing unprovoked war. Lord God, we ask you to hold the people of Ukraine deep in your heart. Protect them, we pray, from the violence, from injury and death, from political gamesmanship, from being used and abused. O oh God, we pray, give the nations of the world the ability and the wisdom to stand up for justice, and the courage too, to dare to care generously. Lord, in your mercy, take from us all the tendencies in us that seek to lord it over others. Take from us those traits that see us pursuing our own needs and wants before those of others, and teach us how to live always in love and dignity and respect, following your example. In your name and for your sake we pray. Amen. May God bless us. May he hold us in the palm of his hand until we meet again. Amen.